For centuries, every Christmas, if one went out to the River Liffey or its tributaries and looked closely in the shallower areas on the gravel beds, you may have seen the telltale sign of narrow shapes writhing around in the current. This is part of an essential dance of life and survival, and one that after centuries may be disappearing. Christmas is the time for spawning for one of the oldest residents of the Liffey, the Atlantic salmon. Uh, Atlantic salmon are critically endangered and we're very fortunate to still have a number, albeit low, spawning here. Every single fish that comes back is important. Every single egg that's laid and every, every single fish that makes the journey back out to sea is indeed very, very precious. We have a calculation that we do, we call it a conservation limit. And that basically is the ideal number of salmon that a, a river can take. So probably for the Liffey you're looking at perhaps four or 5,000 salmon could actually be accommodated in the river itself. Um, at, uh, through the counter at the moment you're probably seeing about three to 500 fish and we're all trying to find out exactly why. It would seem that a lot of the issues are at sea at the moment in terms of survival at sea and marine survival. To understand this growing crisis, one must first appreciate the salmon's remarkable life cycle. So around Christmas Day, the female salmon and the male salmon will meet on the gravel beds in a lovely clear stream like this. Um, then the female will actually use the strength of her tail to gouge out a beautiful little furrow in the bed of the stream, what we call a red. Then she'll start to deposit the eggs. The male will come up beside her, he will then release the milt and fertilise the eggs. Female then will move back over that gravel, use the current again to put the eggs on, uh, put the gravel rather on top of the eggs. And this is done so that the water flows through the gravel because the eggs need oxygen. And on the 1st of April, we assume that to be the birthday of the salmon. They come out of the gravel and they sit on top of the gravel and start to feed freely at that point. And then about two years later, they get very silvery. Physiologically, they become really uncomfortable because their body is telling them, you should be in salt water. They will spend their early years in fresh water before heading out to sea where they attempt to travel to remote feeding grounds as near as Norway and as far away as Greenland. And some of them decide, well, we're going to mature this year. So then they come back after a year in the sea. Others then say, mm, I'm not going to mature for two or three years. And they swim all the way to Greenland. And then they feed in Greenland and then they come back. Using extraordinary powers of navigation to find the exact river where they were born, the salmon will return. They swim upriver through rapids and leaping waterfalls in order to reach the remote spawning grounds in a spectacle which inspired their scientific name, Salmo Salar, the Latin for leaper. At this time of year, they move into the headwaters of our catchments. They've fought the battle over the, over the summer months. They've, they've managed to survive the warm, the warm weather, the warm water, and they come up into the cold, uh, up to the clean gravels, where they need to get to, to build a nest. But in recent years, the return rates have fallen dramatically. So say about maybe 25 years ago, on some rivers, you would have seen back 25 salmon out of every 100 young salmon that went to sea. We're very lucky now to see eight or nine, and very often it's only five. So at that rate, the fish are under huge pressure. We're assembling all of the theories, whether they have data behind them or not, 
and we're then challenging people to produce numbers. And we're going to actually then scientifically look at all the potential issues that may be involved and try and pinpoint exactly where they are dying. Why do we care if one species of fish survive in the river or not? Well, one, because the salmon fishery business could be worth millions to Irish tourism. But more importantly, because they are an indicator species of the state of the river water. They tell us a lot about if the river is clean, and particularly the invertebrates, which the, the juvenile fish eat. You know, so we regularly would take invertebrate samples and examine to see have we got, you know, the right proportion of mayfly and caddis and so on and so forth, because this is what the juvenile fish are going to actually feed on. So, very, very important. They're all indicators, and that, that, that's what we have to monitor. They, they demand the very best and therefore are super sensitive to any of these changes. So they are an excellent barometer in terms of how well a particular river is doing, in terms of the overall, the totality, if you like, of what it can produce in terms of food, in terms of water quality, in terms of habitat. Salmon have long been an iconic part of our mythology and history, which is strange in a country that eats less fish per capita than anywhere else in Europe. Why does the salmon have such a strong place in our culture? Fish ecologist and author Christopher Moriarty has heard a theory. W.S. Green, who was really the, the pioneer fishery scientist in Ireland, he suggested that the really until early in the 19th century when the population exploded, the Irish had easy access to beef. And if you have easy access to beef, why would you go fishing? <laughs> So precisely at the time of the least amount of produce and the least amount of fresh meat available in the depths of winter, the Liffey, in times before river regulation many years ago, offered up many a meal to the hungry at Christmas time. Unfortunately today, above Leek Slip, you can no longer catch salmon at all, in the hope that someday they will revive their numbers and live again every Christmas for people to watch and enjoy the salmon dance of life. The salmon has been around for probably close to 40 million years. I have no doubt the salmon is not going to disappear. But the real question is whether or not the salmon will be in the locations where we expect them to be and where we treasure them. And that is the really profound question. We still have a wild Atlantic salmon seed in this river and in these streams. Am I hopeful? I don't know what climate change is going, is going to bring in the coming years, but I'm pleased with something to work on, and that seed is, some, some, is, is hope, hope for the future. I will leave the last word to the lifelong fisherman and port laureate, Ted Hughes. The life of the salmon is the life of the living waters, sea and river, which is the life of earth and sky, which is our only life. The salmon is part of the flow which will not let up for a minute.